Do you know the basics about ramps? In this video, we'll cover the most important things that you need to know. Okay, so the most important factor in designing a ramp is slope. The slope is equal to the rise over the run. In order for a ramp to be ADA accessible, the slope needs to be one on 12. So for every one inch in rise, you need 12 inches of run. Here's an example. Let's say an exterior door to a building is set eight inches off the ground. You would need the ramp to be eight feet long in order to get up to that door. Now, there's also maximums in ramps. A single run of ramp cannot rise more than 30 inches or be longer than 30 feet without having a flat landing. The numbers may seem like a lot, but we have to think about how it would feel approaching a steep slope in a wheelchair. It can get tiring quickly. The handicapped person would most likely need to take a break after wheeling uphill for about 30 feet. So here's another example. If you had a door set at 60 inches above the ground, you could have one run rising 30 inches over 30 feet, and then a landing, and then another run rising the next 30 inches. Now, let's talk about landings for a minute. If the ramp has no changes in direction, the landings must be at least 60 inches deep, and at least as wide as the run of the ramp. So, if you have a 45 inch wide ramp, then your landing should be 45 by 60. But, if the ramp changes direction, the person in the wheelchair is going to have to turn. So, you can probably guess what's going to be needed. Yep. That's right, a turning radius of five feet. This means your landing will need to be a minimum of 60 inches by 60 inches. Now, we can't forget about handrails and clearances. Handrails are required on all ramps with a rise over six inches or a run over 72 inches. And they must have a clear width of 36 inches between the handrails and be between 34 and 38 inches in height. We also have to remember that a 12 inch handrail extension is needed at the top and bottom of each run. Now, when it comes to clearances, questions usually come up. Here are the basics. The clear area for a ramp landing can overlap with the clear area in front of a door, but it cannot overlap with the actual door swing area of the door itself. Now, before we wrap up, I have to tell you about the two exceptions. Remember how we said the slope of a ramp must be one on 12? Well, the two exceptions are that a slope of one on 10 is allowed if you're rising no more than six inches, and a slope of one on eight is allowed if you're rising no more than three inches. Of course, one on 12 is the most important thing to remember, but you never know when NCARB's gonna throw a curveball at you. So just keep those in mind. And that's it, the basics of ramps. You can head to our website to get a free cheat sheet on everything we just discussed here. You'll find the link in the description below. You'll also find a link to our full-length practice exams to help you get test day ready. And don't forget to give this video a thumbs up, subscribe so you don't miss new videos, and comment below if you have requests for future videos. See you next time! If you want to see more ARE study help, practice questions, explanations, and tips for aspiring architects, be sure to subscribe to our channel. And check out our website, linked in the description below. You'll find full-length practice exams, our blog for aspiring architects, and our free ARE playbook.